Hi Pisces and welcome to our July 2021 reading and this very mystical, love-filled, beautiful month of July. I find July to be, with Cancer and Leo season and the culminating of those energies, I find it to be a time of deep magic and mystery and sparking our creative relationship between mother child between moon and sun this is just a really beautiful time and for pisces i think this month is really gorgeous you, know, you have so much energy moving through cancer you have a new moon in cancer you have sun moving through cancer you have mercury moving through cancer so you have this really wonderful water energy flowing with you supporting your watery ways now this month is also interesting because we have Mars and Venus moving into your opposing sign of Virgo, um, giving you some reflection on your relationships and how you connect to others and, and helping you actually reconnect. Um, if you've been feeling a bit detached or overwhelmed or like some of your close relationships have, you know, with everything that's gone on over the last year and a half, um, that maybe have felt a little bit like they've shut down or gotten slower, those energies can actually really help you connect and finally, I think the other big thing to keep in mind this month is that we have Jupiter, who has been with you for a, a little bit, not very long, moving back into Aquarius. So Jupiter is retrograding and will go join Aquarius for pretty much the rest of this year. But Jupiter will be back with you, my friends. So I would also say um, Jupiter is moving at the very end of the month. So you have most of July to enjoy Jupiter's influence. And when you get to the end of the month, I would suggest Pisces to maybe, um, you know, just reflect on like what themes came up over the last couple of months. You know, did you notice that there were any different influences there or different ideas coming in? Just maybe take note of that and think about it um, so that you can kind of think in terms of 2022 and the magic that we are going to all benefit from when Jupiter is in Pisces for nearly all of 2022. I'm really looking forward to that. I, I love having Jupiter in Pisces. I find this to be such a gorgeous healing energy and I just, I like expanding Piscean energy. I just think you guys, it's a good place to be. So this month has a lot of magic to it. Um, and the message that came through for me for Pisces is the spirit is speaking very strongly to you. And I know I say that I've been saying it for like months, like how long have I been talking about you trusting your innate way of doing things, not overanalyzing it, not trying to cut it off. Like it's an irritating limb, um, not trying or like a, or like an irritating heavy backpack that you're trying to take off, but going in and toward it and not in a way that isolates you or takes you out of the world, but in a way that actually ushers you into the world. And I think this month with all the energy moving through cancer, with energy moving into your opposing sign of Virgo and with this full month almost of Jupiter in your sign before it joins Aquarius again, um, as well as a full moon in Aquarius, by the way, um, at the end of the month or near the end of the month, we'll have a full moon on the 23rd. There's a lot of spiritual energy working with you here that is amplifying your ability to hear from behind closed, like behind the curtain. Um, but you're also getting amplified in your heart center with the Cancerian energy and your relationship center with the Virgo energy. And so, and I didn't even mention Leo's energy, which the, you know, we begin Leo season this month as well on the 20th the 20, or the 19th, I think, right? Oh no, 22nd, sorry, I'm getting my months confused. The 22nd, the sun moves into Leo, sixth house energy of reviewing what's working for you in your day-to-day -day life. You know, are you honoring your spirit? Are you honoring how you really feel? Are you honoring how you have grown and changed? Are you honoring like the metamorphosis that has taken place over the last even six months because you're being asked to make shifts, things can't stay the same. But the message was that heart and spirit are speaking very loud this month. And I love that the heart energy is getting so lit up for you, Pisces, because this is, you know, heart energy mixed with Piscean energy, mixed with Cancerian energy. That is beautiful magic. And it was making me think about how there's something leading you forward. And I'm going to start shuffling. I'm using the animal totem tarot this month. I'm just going all in with the, the symbolism here, taking a little break from our rider weight usual programming and going into something a little 
new indifference. Um, there are going to be images and ideas showing up in your day to day, you know, like when you're going, this is something I like to do. And this is a good example. I think sometimes like you'd all go for a walk in the evening and here in the Northern hemisphere, it's summer. So evening walks are really, really nice. And it's, I love going to that to walk in that time of card wants to come out. Two cards want to come out. Eight of pentacles and 10 of cups. Very nice. Mountain goat and penguins. Very fun. I love these. These are such good cards. Um, you know, your walk. I love to walk in the evening. And uh, like at that time of evening when the lights in the windows are coming on, you know, people are like in their in their worlds, in their homes, their families that come home from work or maybe they've been home or maybe they're on, the kids are on vacation because school is out or whatever it is and like you know light will turn on and every once in a while I'll walk by a house and there's something about like the house and the way that the the light turns on the window or something that will just it's like I'll have this psychic hit right about something that ties me to something that's coming my way that for whatever reason the essence the energetics of what's captured when that light turns on in that specific window at that specific time will just wake something up in me that warmth from the window, the way it lit, lights up, the smell in the air. Two more cards wanted to come out. King of Pentacles and the Emperor. Okay, really strong energy here. This is not vague. And, you know, I'd say as we get into July, we're coming out of Mercury retrograde post shadow phase. We're coming, we're well out of eclipse season at this point. We're kind of out of some of those rockier energies. We do have a lot of outer planets retrograde. We have Jupiter in your sign, Saturn, Neptune, your ruling planet is retrograde, Pluto and Chiron goes retrograde this month as well. But these outer planet retrogrades can kind of help us see more clearly um, about where we're standing now, right? And there's kind of this simple honesty in July, but it's not like harsh honesty the way that you think about like, I'm just going to tell you what it is and cut everything out of your life kind of energy. And there's a hair in my mouth and it's driving me crazy. Um, <laughs> it's the uh, it's the kind of energy that just tenderly shows you, hey, this way. And let's talk about these cards. Um, yeah, so pay attention to those hits when you see a color that just lights you up or when you see, yeah, you see a light in a window that there's something about it or, you know, you smell a smell or you walk by a building. Um, what, yeah, whatever those little hits are, or you hear a song, right? Like it's not even about the song or about the visual or about the thing you're seeing. You're going to want when you get that hit to then go in what is that telling you? What's the message that's coming through? What intuitive hit happens? Because you're supposed to be following your heart, especially in July. Follow your heart. Where is your heart trying to tell you to go? Where is it like, where is that inner mother and inner child pulling you in a direction? So let's talk about it because you have gorgeous cards, my friends. I love these cards. They are so much about what is, what is um, good in life like the good things in life, the strong things in life. We start off with the eight of pentacles, the mountain goat, the hard worker. And yes, you know, that energy can sometimes be a little overwhelming and <laughs> mountain goats are quite intense, but you know, I think mountain goats are hilarious. They're so funny. Their ability to like have humor and curiosity about what happens when you just jump, right? You just keep going. And that's the eight of pentacles, right? Uh, for me, this is a card of fruition. So um, with things that maybe you have been working toward or on, things that you have been maybe nesting on for since Pisces season or before, over the last year, eight of pentacles always speaks to there being a moment of culmination, a moment of being ready to maybe express this to people around you to be a little bit more open with where you are, like what you've created, if it's art or what you want, if it's conversation. Eight of Pentacles is very supportive of you sharing 
what you have learned and how you have integrated it and how you want to share it with the world. You're also here with 10 of cups, my friends. This is another culminating card, eight of pentacles and 10 of cups. Like we're not messing around here. Okay. So 10 of cups, the penguins, you know, the true love, <laughs> the monogamous penguins, right? And I'm not pushing any lifestyle on anybody, but, uh, the point being here that there is a sense, you know, 10 of cups is just such a good energy, right? Because it's got this almost infinite, it's infinite love. It's unconditional love. It's like, it's that feeling where you're just enveloped in love. What I'm noticing with both the eight of pentacles and the 10 of cups, these are about things that are working. It doesn't mean that they're not vulnerable or a little scary or get a little bit of butterflies or uh, you don't know how it's all going to work out, but it's following your truest self, right? And that means too, for me, eight of pentacles, 10 of cups, it's not about the bells and whistles. It's about the, it's about really coming back to basics, right? That's what eight of pentacles and 10 of cups is about. What really feeds your soul? Like really ask that question. Not what you've been good at for a long time, not what everybody knows you're good at. And you know, Oh, they're good at, you know, making everybody comfortable. Oh, they're good at writing poetry and that's what they do. Or they're good at editing or, um, you know, whatever it may be. Like people might say those things about you. It doesn't matter who cares what they have to say. What do you want to do? Um, also though, what I'm seeing here is good things coming your way, right? There is something going on here with love and money. Now, speaking of money, we also have the King of Pentacles, the bison, uh, very powerful symbolism there. I would say the bison is obviously an extremely empowered, grounded being, and one that was very valuable, obviously, um, for many people in the past. I think the thing with the bison is the bison is the bison, right? Owns his space, owns who he is. That's the thing with King of Pentacles. There is a, there's an investment thing going on here. There's a commitment investment situation happening here. And whether that's, you know, with meeting somebody new, who you're going to commit to long-term committing to a new project, a new creativity, um, committing to, I don't know, there's a commitment going on though, where it's like, I know I want to do this. So I'm going to show up a hundred percent. And that's something that your heart is going to be telling you, I think, too, because you might have your mind going and trying to tell you all the reasons why you're not allowed to be vulnerable, to be creative, whatever. And that doesn't matter. Now, finally, we have the emperor, the gorilla. Uh, and, you know, messaging around the gorilla is this. This has a lot to do with the courage to be yourself again, like with the bison. It also has the courage to be the ruler in your own life and how we so often think we want to be in charge, right? But then it's overwhelming to hold the space of leader in your own life, to hold the space of that center point of knowing, of always knowing that you can trust yourself, of always knowing that you're going to make the right choices for yourself is something that takes a level of courage that we're trained out of culturally often. We're told we shouldn't be our own leaders. We're told we should just do things in a certain order. And, Yes, we want to take care of those around us. Yes, we want to take care of our communities, but we need to want to do that from a place of self-respect, right? We can't be doing it from a place of shame, from guilt, from um, any of those states, right? We want to be serving those we love in our communities and sharing our gifts and committing and being vulnerable and doing all those things from a place of self-worth, from a place of self-value, not from shame, from guilt, from expectation from others or from within ourselves. So what I'm seeing here is this is not about you pretending to be someone you're not. This is not about you putting on curl, cool girl mode, cool guy mode, cool person mode. 
so that you can make other people comfortable so that they don't know that you have emotional depth so that they don't know that you're going through something so that they don't know that you actually have preferences about how you'd like to be treated, about what you'd like to have happen. Um, and I mean, these cards are very supportive. They speak to culmination of love, of money, of projects, of identity. They speak to moving forward. The energy is very supportive in, in July. It just is. There's, there's, a, there's a nurturance going on here that says, hey, if you want to follow those little sparks, the colors, the taste, the sounds, the, the songs, the the visuals that are coming your way saying, hey, go over here, go over here. If you're willing to follow your heart, if you're willing to be the bison, the gorilla, the, the being that is very much itself is not trying to fit into little containers, is not trying to be valuable based on some other criteria, but is fully showing up to those things that are important to you. It's going to flow so easily. I hope this is making sense. Because sometimes when I'm talking about things like really honoring who we are, really being in integrity, really, um, you know, not trying to, to serve everybody, but to serve ourselves, it gets misrepresented that I'm saying that we all need to be really obsessed with our individualist culture, which often isolates us. And I think what I'm saying is that we need to honor ourselves so that we're not functioning from a place of the familiar repetitive that often is tied to guilt and shame and fear, right? And we want to be making moves, making commitments, making strides and creating and playing and showing up from that place of deep self-love. And I know you already are with me on this, but okay, the message was really simple, Pisces, and I just went on a whole little <laughs> tangent. Trust your heart. Say yes when you want something. Let people know what you need. Show your heart, you know, and of course do that in your own time and in your own way. I cannot tell you what that time or place is, right? Like I'm not about to be like, just recklessly do whatever, even if you don't feel it, obviously. But I'm seeing really beautiful things coming your way. As long as you're willing to be yourself, follow your heart and listen to spirit as it speaks through you. That's where you're always gonna wanna start. I'm going to be doing a ton of activations on my Patreon. This is where I activate every single new and full moon and I help us close out things like Mercury retrograde and understand some of the deeper astrology as well as some of the energies. And it's a place where I just kind of talk about some of my more personal things like where I am in the world and how my relationship is going and all of those things. So if you're looking to hang out and just chat with me, I'd love to see you there. You can also find me on my Instagram and my website. Um, and I'm really coming out of hibernation, pandemic hibernation. Um, I was pretty overwhelmed. I was pretty overwhelmed during the pandemic. I felt just getting online felt really overwhelming for big chunks of that time. And I know a lot of us felt that way. And I feel this is like right now, this month in June, as I'm filming these and doing these talks, I'm feeling like I'm coming back to myself and really excited to re-engage with everybody again and like just be more present and not so much go back in time to like two years ago when I was one way, but to like bring that Sarah from a couple of years ago, plus all that I've learned over the last couple of years to the place here and really connect with you all. So I hope to see you in any of those places and I'd love to see you here if you wanna hang out. So like and subscribe. I will see you all in August for more magical energy. Uh, Leo season is a powerful time to reset your routines, but we will talk about that more in our August discussion. And uh, I hope you stick around. I love you, Pisces. Have a gorgeous July.